Boom! What's shaking, gang? Jeff Bastien here. Hope everyone's having a great week. First Tuesday of the month, so welcome to this month's installment of Food for Thought. So the fine people at DistroKid emailed me the other week asking if I'd be interested in doing a sponsored video. Now, I knew of DistroKid, but I hadn't used any of their services yet. So at the end of the day, I emailed them back and I said I would love to do the video, but I had one condition. I said that I want to do the video in a way that completely informs you guys, answers as many of the unanswered questions I found online as possible, and thus giving you guys as much information as possible to make an informed decision. So long story short, they were totally cool with that, and here we are. So we're going to go through the site, the back end of the site, show you how to upload your music, get it into all the stores, and whenever we hit a section where there was confusion or unanswered questions online, that's when I'll go into those specific points. So with that said, let's get on with the tour. All right, gang, so when you land on DistroKid's website, this is obviously their landing page, so in this area is where you would sign up for the service, and then over here on the right we have a whole bunch of information. Now here it says pay only $19.99 to upload unlimited songs and albums for a year. Now that's actually their base subscription plan. There's actually three and we'll get into those shortly. And also here you see it says keep 100% of your royalties, get paid monthly. Now this is the first area that online a lot of people had gripes about and felt like DistroKid was ripping them off. Now yes, this part's completely true. You keep 100% of the royalties, DistroKid doesn't take any of that. But the store still take their cut. So to give you a quick example, you put your music in the iTunes store and songs sell for a buck. You sell 100 copies of that song, but then you only get paid 70 bucks. And then people are like, oh, DistroKid's taking my money. No, no, no. That 30% that you lost was Apple taking their cut for your music being in their store. Now, Apple's cut varies from store to store. So whether you're in the Canadian store or the American store, the cut that they take varies. Spotify's going to take their cut. All the stores are going to take a cut. But DistroKid isn't. So those 100 songs at a dollar apiece, that $70 you get from Apple, goes for DistroKid and you get all of that. So that's the first area of confusion. I wanted to clear up about the service. All right, so remember I said there's three plans. These are the three plans. So this is the $20 a year plan. So if you're just a single band or a solo artist, this would be the plan that you'd want to pick. Next plan over is Musician Plus. This one's $36 a year. This one covers two artists or two bands. So maybe you have a band, but you also have your own solo project and you want to put both of them out. This would be the plan that you'd want to sign up for. And now the third plan is the label plan. So this one's $80 a year, but literally unless you're a small label and have five to a hundred bands that you need to put music out for, you wouldn't need this one. But if you are a small label, this would be the one that you'd want to pick. Now the label and the Musician Plus plan also come with some extra perks that you can see down here. You may or may not need these, but if you think they'd be a benefit to you, then they're there. So just like anything, if you're going to sign up, you would just need to go through the three plans and decide which one's going to be best for you. All right, so landing on the upload page, this is obviously the page where you would upload your songs or your albums. So you can pick all the stores that you want to have your music uploaded to. And if there's particular ones you don't want to have your music uploaded to, just uncheck the box. Number of songs, obviously you would just pick this menu and pick the number of songs. If it's just a single, leave it at one. If it's an EP or, or an album, just put in the number of tracks. Has this been previously released? Yes or no. If it's no, just leave it at no. If yes, just click on this button and you'll have a little more information to fill out. Artist name and band name. Now, you want to read this information before you type this in and you want to type the information in accordingly. The stores themselves, not DistroKid, can reject the album for various things and this is one of those areas. So just follow what it says and you'll be fine. So moving on to the release date. Now this can be another area of confusion. Basically all the stores will have their own ingest rate. So some stores might ingest and have your music on their site within a couple hours. Others it may take a few days. Other stores it might take a week. So this is actually a really good area of opportunity. So I'd ask the team at DistroKid about this one specifically. So again, how quickly a store ingests your music is totally out of DistroKid's hands but their recommendation was three to four weeks. So your album's done, you're uploading it, set the release date to three or four weeks ahead of time. That way you know for sure on this date your music is going to be live and in all the stores, and that gives you almost a month to really hype up and promote the new album you've got coming out. Even major label bands, they finish an album that's not immediately out the next day, it's months down the road. So they use this time to start promoting the album. So that's what you should also be using this time for. So tying in with the release date, you also now get a hyperfollow page. This is a new feature they've just set up recently. Now this is the information about it here. I haven't put any music out yet, so I can't show you what a hyperfollow page looks like. But this is a new feature that you get to help promote your album. So do you want to let people pre-order your music? That's pretty straightforward. Yes or no? The record label section, if you don't have a record label, like it says, just make one up and type it in. Now the album artwork. This is another one where the stores can get a little finicky with it. So just like with your band or artist name, down below here you get the information that you need. 
And as long as you follow this, you won't have to worry about the stores rejecting your album. All right, so language would be the language that your album's being released in. Then you pick your genre. This is where you would input the title of the song. Now again, like your band name and the album artwork, you're gonna have instructions to follow to make sure that the stores don't end up rejecting it. And the audio file, this is where you would upload the actual file. And you'll see over here, already got an ISRC code. Now a lot of you might be asking, what is an ISRC code? An IRC code is an international standard recording code. And what that's used for is for tracking purposes. See, when you buy an album, there'll be a barcode on the back of the album. That's the barcode for the album itself as a whole to track album sales. An ISRC code, on the other hand, one is given to each individual song on that album. And again, same thing, it's a tracking code. So for example, if your song was being played on a radio station, that's the code that would be used to track how many times that song is played on that particular radio station. That way, if you have a pro affiliate, ASCAP, BMI, SOCAN, this would be used for them to track your songs and be able to collect your royalty payments. Now you can generate your own ISRC codes. Don't ever pay for them. Some sites make you pay for them. It's not something you have to pay for. There'll be a link in the description below on how to generate your own, or you can just let DistroKid do it for you. But always keep track of your ISRC codes. That's your responsibility to log those codes, put them in a spreadsheet or something, and just tuck them away. Those are one of those things you always want to keep a record of. So the songwriter section, I wrote this song or managed the songwriter, it's a true original, or somebody else wrote it and it's a cover song. So cool story, you can actually put cover songs on your album. You don't have to try and hunt down the label and the publishing company and try and get permission and all this other stuff. DistroKid will take care of that for you. So we just hit this button, that will give you some information here, basically lets you know what you can do and what's not going to fly. Now if you do decide to upload a cover song, uh, they do charge a fee of a dollar per month, so $12 a year. But if you think about it, this extra dollar a month is absolutely nothing compared to the pain in the butt it would be if you were trying to do this on your own. If you're trying to contact labels and publishing companies to get this stuff, good luck. So moving on, explicit lyrics, yes or no, is this a radio edit, yes or no, instrumental, yes or no, track price. Now I remember when I mentioned the three plans, two of the three allow you to pick your, your price in some of these stores. So that's where you would be able to pick your price. All right, so now we get to the section with the extras. Now this is another one of those areas online where people were kind of confused about and thought they were being charged for extra stuff. Well, all this is optional. You don't have to pick this stuff. Okay, so I forgot to mention it, but there's a link in the description below that'll get you 7% off your first year with DistroKid. Now that applies to the three subscription plans that I showed you earlier, but it doesn't apply to these, just so that you know. So the extras you can pick and choose from if you so decide to, uh, Instagram and Facebook. This will add your music to Instagram's music and stories. YouTube money, now this is a good one. So you put out some music and then somebody steals one of your songs, puts it in a video on YouTube. They're getting a bajillion views on it and making all this money and you're getting jack squat. That's what this one is for. So basically this will put your music into the content ID system that YouTube uses to find music that's being used in videos. So if somebody is using your music in their video, you'll be notified and then you can take it from there. Store maximizer, so whenever DistroKid adds a new store to their service, this will automatically put your music into the new store. Shazam and Siri, this is cool. So if people are hearing your music and they're like, oh, I have no idea who this is, but I like this song, then they can use Shazam or Siri to be able to figure out who you are. That's a good one. And the last one we have here is Leave a Legacy. Now this one's just a one-time $29 fee. So let, let me explain how this one works. So as long as you're signed up with DistroKid and paying your whatever $20 a year, then your music stays in all the stores that you put it in. But if you were to cancel your subscription at the end of your year, then your music is gonna be pulled from the stores. So what this option allows is that even if you leave the subscription service with DistroKid, this will still keep your music in the stores. And then the last little bottom part is just some legal stuff you gotta check. And that's it for the upload page. Now another really cool thing is teams. So let's say you're a four piece band, you've got four people in the band that are all equally contributing to writing the music. Once you get your music into the stores, you can use teams so that everybody is getting their equal fair cut of the music income. So that means distributing the income to the rest of your band members, you don't even have to worry about it anymore. Again, another cool service. And this one's free and included. Now there's also a stats page so you can come and see how your music is performing in the various stores you've put it in. Again, I haven't uploaded anything yet, so there's nothing for me to show you here, but this is where you would see all of this information. You can also go to the bank page and see how much money you've got coming in from the various stores. You can also get a breakdown store by store. So again, another super cool feature. And then if you come into the settings page, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you can go through. You can add credits and liner notes, uh, cover song licenses. Remember I said you can upload cover songs. This is where you can track and download all the licenses that DistroKid has got 
button for you. Uh, the hyperfollow I mentioned. Lyrics, so you can get your lyrics into the Apple Music Store. Spotify for artists, Apple Music for artists. Now DistroKid gets you uh, verified with Spotify. You can also do it with Apple. And there's a link down in here that can walk you through that process. And the last section on their site that I want to show you is the knowledge base section. So if you have any further questions or there's questions maybe I didn't address in this particular video, this page is a great resource to find the answers to those questions. All right, so just before we wrap this up, one of the big questions that I kept seeing all over the place was about copywriting, copywriting your songs. So that's what we're going to touch on now. So how do you actually copyright your music? Well, technically just recording it is copywriting it. Uploading it to the various stores via services like DistroKid is technically copywriting it. But if you do want to make sure that your music is 100% guaranteed copyright protected, then you'd want to register the stuff with your particular country's government. Most every country's government is going to have a copyright team department. So if you want to register your music, I put links below in the description for the U.S. Copyright Department and the Canadian Copyright Department. Now you can also get books on it. Uh, my copy is a little outdated, but there's books about copyright that you can get for the various countries. Uh, some other good books, whether you buy these specific ones or not. Uh, this one's all you need to know about the music business. This one's I Don't Need a Record Deal. This one's a really good one, actually. So as for DistroKid, I'm very much looking forward to using it. And if you decide that it's right for you, again, just click on the link in the description below. You'll get 7% off one of the three plans for your first year. If there are any unanswered questions that you still have, leave them in the comment section below, and I will either answer the question for you, or I'll get in touch with the crew at DistroKid. Either way, I'll get the answer for you. And as time goes on, if there's questions I'm seeing repeating a lot in the comments section, I'll be sure to add those answers to the description section for this video. And on that note, the wifey came home with Starbucks for me. Yes! So as always, I hope this video was informative for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and you kick the bell button. I've been Mr. Jeff, and uh, I'm gonna go enjoy my sweet, sweet nectar of the gods. Mmm. That is good. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching.